In ancient times, a man who was bullied and abused by his 80 older brothers would embark on a journey that make him the master of our realm. He was Japan's master of the great land, Okuninushi. And this is Legends from the Pacific. Aloha, and thank you for joining us. This is Legends from the Pacific, episode 140, The Great Land's Master, Okuninushi. I am Kamuela Kaneshiro, a native Hawaiian professional writer, speaker, and Comic-Con panelist with extensive film and television experience. I study mythology, I've encountered unusual things, and I'm a geek. In the beginning, there was the Pacific Ocean. A canoe broke the horizon, piloted by Pele, a beautiful Polynesian maiden who dominated the waves until she felt safe to stop. The audiobook of Our Legends from the Pacific Book One is now available, narrated by multi-award winning voice actress Emily Wu Zeller. Emily has worked on anime, the video game Cyberpunk 2077, and over 500 audiobooks including Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back from a certain point of view. Just click the link in our show notes to purchase our audiobook and enjoy Emily telling our stories today. Later in this episode, your featured song in Hawaiian word, but first, let me share with you the master's story. As usual, I apologize for any mispronounced names or words and appreciate your understanding. Though he has many names, he is commonly known as Okuninushi. He is worshipped in Shinto shrines and is the descendant of one of Japan's greatest gods. But growing up was tough for him because he had 80, yeah, eight, zero brothers who bullied him and made him their personal servant. When the brothers learned a beautiful princess was seeking a husband, they set out to meet her, and Okuninushi was in charge of their things. Meanwhile, a rabbit struggled crossing a great body of water. Long ago, the sea separated a rabbit from the great land. As the rabbit dreamed of living on the great land, an alligator surfaced. The rabbit called to the gator and asked if it had a big family. Yes, the gator said, I have many relatives. The rabbit chuckled, I bet you don't have more than me. Call them over and I'll count you. The gator did and its relatives bridged the lands. The rabbit hopped on each gator, counting them on its way to the great land. Near its beach, the rabbit laughed saying it tricked the gators so he could reach the land. One of the last alligators lurched for the rabbit, chomped its tail, and pulled its fur off. The rabbit was happy to be on the great land, but horrified it lost its fur. A group of men approached, and the rabbit asked for their help. The men told it to jump in the ocean and dry in the sun. Salt water stung it while the sun aggravated the exposed rabbit. The men laughed at the rabbit's agony and continued on their way. Their youngest brother, Okuni Nushi, told the rabbit to dive into the nearby freshwater stream and roll in the plants along the bank. The rabbit did. Salt washed from its body. The rabbit rolled in the plants and his fur was restored. It thanked Okuni Nushi and said while his brothers were on their way to see the princess, Okuni Nushi would be the one she married. He thanked the rabbit, gathered his brother's bags, and continued following them. The rabbit was correct. The princess married Okuninushi. However, his jealous brothers plotted a fatal act of vengeance. They convinced Okuninushi to join them hunting a massive red boar in the mountains. His brothers yelled down to him the boar was heading his way and be ready to catch it. The ground trembled as a glow neared. Okuninushi widened his stance. Trees crackled and fell. Then, a flaming boulder erupted from the woods. The boar was a lie. His brothers set a rock on fire, rode it downhill, and it killed Okuninushi. His mother was heartbroken and prayed for the deities to restore him. They agreed, and Okuninushi was revived. 
However, his brothers made a trap out of a tree they cut in half, lured Ukuninushi to it. The tree sprang back and killed him. His mother prayed for the deities to restore him. They agreed, and Okuninushi was revived. This time, his mother told him to see their ancestor, the storm god, who would train him to protect himself from his evil brothers. Okuninushi went to the underworld, and his ancestor agreed to train him. However, the storm god's beautiful daughter and Okuninushi developed feelings for each other. When the storm god discovered this, he made Okuninushi sleep in a room of snakes. But the god's daughter gave him enchanted clothes which made him and the snakes sleep peacefully. The god woke and was shocked to see Okuninushi. That night he made him sleep among centipedes and insects. But again the god's daughter gave Okuninushi enchanted clothes which made him and the creatures sleep peacefully. The god woke and again was shocked seeing Okuninushi. The god grabbed a bow and shot an arrow into a field of long grass. He told Okuninushi to retrieve it. As he neared the arrow, smoke filled his nostrils. The god set fire to the field and it closed in. A field mouse erupted from the long grass and showed Okuninushi to a hole where they'd both survive. Near it was the god's arrow. Okuninushi grabbed it and dove into the hole. The god chuckled as he surveyed the burned field. However, Okuninushi approached from the smoke and handed the god his arrow. The god thanked Okuninushi and took him to the palace, where he made him use his teeth to pick lice and other parasites from his hair. As the god undid his long hair and got comfortable, his daughter snuck in and gave Okuninushi a mixture of food that looked like lice. While he pretended to remove lice from the god's hair, the deity snored. Okuninushi tied the god's long hair to the palace's rafters and pillars, gathered the god's bow, arrow, and stringed instrument, or koto, and left with the god's daughter. During their escape, the god woke. He went to pursue them, but was delayed by his tied hair. The couple returned to our realm. The god gave them his blessing, and Okuninushi defeated his brothers and ruled the great land with his wives. A big mahalo nuilo to our Patreon members, Will and Ollie Geis, Christopher, Meg, Jessica Bullock, Edward Pueohenki, Felisa H., The Makuli Guy, and of course, Ren Shepard. Your support keeps our show going. If you'd like to support our show, please click the link in our show notes and become a Legends from the Pacific Patreon member to enjoy an exclusive monthly Hawaiian story like the rare story of who the Hawaiian god was before Pele and other nifty benefits. Your rewards are waiting for you, so become a Legends from the Pacific Patreon member today. It should be noted, some stories claim Okuninushi was actually named Ona Muji. While he was returning to our realm and his ancestor gave him his blessing, he also gave Onamuji the name Okuninushi, or Master of the Great Land, which he eventually transferred, but that's a story for another time. Today, Okuninushi is seen in the usual various media, and an asteroid is named after him. Japan's emperors claimed to be his descendants. Then, of course, he was combined with the Buddhist Time Lord, Mahakata, to create the deity Daikoku Ten. Daikoku Ten is the god of wealth, war, fortune, and fertility. You can find him in Shinto and Buddhist temples, and is usually depicted as a happy man sitting on two bundles of rice, carrying a sack and magic hammer. Daikoku Ten is also one of the seven lucky gods. So what we learn? I couldn't help but notice many similarities between Okuninushi and Vasilisa and Baba Yaga stories. I'm still trying to understand how and why two gods, Okuninushi and Mahakala, were combined to make Daikoku Ten. You know, aside from it was just to gain more followers. Though I feel this may be the only reason. It's also interesting how animals play into things. For example, rabbits represent fertility and mice represent good fortune or wealth, both of which were in Okuninushi's stories, even though he's the master of the great land. If you like what you heard, please give us a rating and write a review. I'd really appreciate it as well as our future listeners. 
Our theme song is Mystery by Tavana, courtesy of High Sessions. Sound effects are by Sound Effects Factory. Our music coordinator is Matt Duffy, a.k.a. DJ Triple Bypass. Links and show notes can be found on our website, legendsfromthepacific.com, including a link to your featured song, which is Sand Castles by Herb Ota and John Yamasato, courtesy of High Sessions. Legends from the Pacific was written, produced, and edited by me, Kamuela Kaneshiro. I also wrote our original stories. Your featured Hawaiian word is haku. Haku means master. An example of haku is Yoda is a Jedi haku. Once again, haku is Hawaiian for master. Thank you once again for listening. Mahalo and a hui ho!